Hey everyone, it's Everything Heap here. It's been two years since I made my last Windows XP survival guide, and since then, a lot has changed. Today, I'm going to be updating that video for the year 2023, as a lot of developments have been made then since for Windows XP. I'm also going to be going into a lot more depth into different web browsers, programs, and general things you'd likely want to do on Windows XP. I will link timestamps and all of the stuff that I use in the description if you want to fast forward to a certain section. Before I start, I feel like I have to give a quick disclaimer, I do not in any way condone the regular use of Windows XP. The operating system hasn't been updated in nearly 10 years at this point, and it continues to be a very big security risk, especially if you're connecting your machine to the internet. This guide isn't meant for regular usage of Windows XP, it's more meant for if you have an older computer lying around that can't run any newer versions of Windows, or if you want to install XP for a niche application or a niche use case. If you need to do anything online, consider using another device such as a smartphone or an alternative computer to access the internet. With that out of the way, let's get started. So first up is the install. For the ISO, I would only trust ISOs that are original copies of Windows XP, as many custom ISOs you can find online can have malware integrated into them, and you really can't take any chances. I'll have a copy of the official Windows XP ISO linked in the description. Just remember that this won't have any later patches included, meaning you'll likely have to patch it yourself. After that, if you're burning the ISO to USB, you can use Rufus and it will burn the ISO normally. Just remember to set it as NTFS or the setup will be painfully slow. If you need to integrate SATA drivers for more modern computers, I'd recommend a program named WinSetup from USB, which does the integration of SATA drivers for you by default. I'll have a video linked in the cards by my friend Boki XD, who did a video on how to create this USB drive inside this program. For the purposes of this video, I will be installing Windows XP on a virtual machine, so I won't need the drivers. When you've inserted the USB or the CD, depending on what you're using, go through setup normally and you should be greeted to the desktop and the iconic Bliss wallpaper. From this point, you can move to installing drivers. I'd recommend using a tool called Snappy Driver Installer, however, the latest versions are quite trash and filled with advertisements, so you'll need to find an older version of the program. Once again, I'll have the version I used linked in the description for download. Once you download and extract it, let your computer download and install the drivers and restart. The next thing you need to worry about is security. Like I said before, Windows XP hasn't been updated in a long time, so you'll need some protection. That's what she said! <laughs> There are many AV programs you can use on Windows XP, but the one I would recommend the most is Malwarebytes. The last version came out a long time ago, but it still gets definition updates to this day, hence why I recommend it. The link for that will be in the description. You can also use another antivirus like Avast or AVG, as those still get updates for XP too. Finally, you want to turn on features such as DEP, which stands for Data Execution Prevention, and other security measures to curb the spread of malware on your system. Additionally, you can also create a limited user account and do most of your usage there while reserving the administrator account for when you need it. But chances are, if you're using an original ISO, you won't have many updates, and that's where the update section comes in. Windows Update on XP has stopped working for ages. In fact, I remember it hasn't even worked since around 2018, that was at least for me. So you're probably wondering how we can update Windows XP, and that's where another awesome program comes in. This is Legacy Update. It's a program made for older versions of Windows that don't have SHA-2 support, and it updates your computers with updates that get downloaded onto their servers. Additionally, it comes with support for installing POS Ready 2009 updates, which got updates until 2019, adding a big boost for security on Windows XP. You'll also want to make sure all of your programs are as up-to-date as can possibly be, meaning you'll likely have to check Windows Update multiple times. After you finish updating and properly securing your system, the the next point of interest you'll want to look at is the browser. The last version of Chrome for Windows XP and Vista came out in 2016, and the last version of Firefox came out a year later. This makes both browsers severely outdated and not a valid choice for usage on Windows XP. This is where some awesome community browsers come in. By far, the best browser for use on Windows XP is MyPal68. It's based on Firefox Quantum 68, which might seem old, but in reality, it works very well. It gets a very high score on the HTML5 test, and generally works the best.
best for browsing on Windows XP. The only issue that I've had so far with it is that on my computer dedicated to running Windows XP, every time I close the browser the machine crashes with the blue screen of death. There are also some less capable but also more stable browsers such as New Moon and Serpent that work quite well on Windows XP. In terms of Chromium based browsers, most of them are Chinese made browsers such as 360 Extreme and Kafan Mini Browser, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, which both work well. However, I wouldn't trust them due to them being from Chinese origin and because they lack an open source code base, meaning you can't trust they aren't folding home, if you get what I mean. The next section is just going to show general applications that still get updates for Windows XP. OpenOffice is still getting updates for Windows XP and will still work perfectly fine. The same can be said for VLC, Airfun View, and 7-Zip which all still work on Windows XP despite the uh, OS's age. However, the list of up-to-date software that works on Windows XP is slowly but surely shrinking every year. Thus, I'd recommend finding older versions of programs that still work on XP and blocking them from accessing the internet using the firewall. Sometimes there are community-made clients for programs that used to work on Windows XP. For example, Spotify XP is designed for playing Spotify on Windows XP, and it works pretty well. You can always find these programs and you can try them and see if they work on Windows XP. To conclude, Windows XP is a very difficult OS to get up and running in the modern world. However, it is doable. The lack of security updates combined with most applications not being updated anymore, as well as other factors make using Windows XP safely pretty difficult. It's not impossible to use like I mentioned earlier. I have a computer that I installed XP on recently. However, if something goes wrong, you aren't going to be able to find much help on search engines like Google for your problems. If you want like-minded people to discuss Windows XP with, I would recommend searching for subreddits and Discord servers to join where the main talk is about legacy versions of Windows. They could probably help you better than this video can. But either way, I hope this video was at least somewhat useful to you, and if it was, then drop a like and subscribe. I'll see you all next time.